Welcome to episode five of Mastering the Mastermind. Um, after our first four introductory episodes, I think it's about time we got in there and uh, got under the hood and started editing. Uh, we're going to be working in the Mastermind Editor today. The Mastermind software is available for free from our website, and there are two versions. One of them is simply called Mastermind Editor, and that one is for the Mastermind PBCs and the Mastermind LT. And there is a, a separate Mastermind GT editor uh, for the Mastermind GT models. And it's available for Mac and PC desktop computers currently. Um, so once you have that downloaded and, and installed, when you run it, you're going to see this screen. Um, it's a lot of stuff here. We're going to take this uh, a little bit at a time. Um, today we're going to just talk about uh, setting up basic presets. Um, so the, uh, we start up in the global tab here. Um, we're going to ignore basically everything here except for one very important setting, and that is model right here. Um, you want this to match the model of the product that you're going to be editing for. The, um, we're going to go with the PVC 6X today, um, but basically what we're going to be showing is going to apply to all the masterminds, and the, the, the instructions should be the, the same for all. And um, if you notice when I changed that, it asked if I wanted a factory reset. And uh, generally speaking, yes, you should say yes. And it'll set everything up for that particular product. And so the first thing you're going to do with any mastermind is you're going to go to the devices tab and you've got to tell it what you have. And let's say in this situation, we have um, two pedals um, that, that and, and I should point out, we only list the devices that actually respond to MIDI. On the uh, Mastermind PVCs, you can plug in all sorts of pedals, you know, and they can be, you know, basic analog ones. And if that's the case, then, um, you know, one of those pedals don't get listed here because they're not a, a MIDI device. And so the, uh, there's no uh, need to, uh, well, you, you can't send MIDI commands to them anyway. So let's say we have a, a Strymon timeline and, a, uh, and an Eventide H9. And so we would make sure the first device here, or the first slot here, is selected. And it, it comes up with a mini effect gizmo um, in the factory settings, but we can change that. And we just change Mac manufacturer to Strymon, and, well, timeline comes up automatically. And we um, keep this list, um, we, we update it from time to time to add new devices. And the nice thing is, if your device is listed in here, uh, most of these settings get configured automatically for you, so you don't have to worry about them. Um, the one setting that you do need to uh, pay attention to is MIDI channel. And um, each MIDI device should be on a different MIDI channel. And um, the settings on the, on the Mastermind need to match the settings on the pedals themselves. So we have the Strymon timeline set to MIDI channel 1. You have to make sure that the pedals own settings internal to the pedal are also set to channel one so that uh, when the when the PVC or LT transmits the uh, you know the pedal will, will know to receive on that same channel so we'll go to device slot number two here and go to even tied h9 and now we've configured that for the h9 and so we definitely don't want to have two devices on the same channel we'll say that the h9 is on channel two and then um, well, we would have to go into the H9 editing software or on the H9 itself and make sure that it's receiving on channel 2. Um, one other important thing is the MIDI port selection, but 99% of the time you're going to want to leave this set to MIDI out. And so we would connect uh, the MIDI output of the timeline, I'm sorry, the MIDI output of the mastermind to the MIDI input of the timeline, the MIDI output of the timeline into the H9's MIDI input, and that's how you uh, chain MIDI devices from one to the next. And so let's say we have one more pedal that isn't listed here yet. Let's um, take that one, and we'll, we have a special category for that, and that's generic. And we just want to call it a generic PCCC device, which is just, yeah, our, our, our name for one that, well, something we haven't listed yet. And so let's say it's, I don't know, um, We'll just call it random reverb. And um, what comes up is with is a uh, basically settings that should work with, with most devices. Now, there are some details with MIDI banks and all that, but if, if your pedal has 128 presets or less, 
um, then this setting should work. And even if you even if you have more than 128 presets, these settings should at least get allow you to get at the first 128. Um, one thing that you might want to depart from the the factory settings here is uh, we're finding that most pedals it's better to turn on send redundant PCs than to have it off. We'll explain that in another video, but for now let's let's try turning it on if it's a uh, if it's a, a, a generic pedal. Um, and this one we'll set to MIDI channel three, and we'll assume that our pedal is uh, also set to three. So now I've got our three pedal system. And so now let's go over to presets and show how we program presets on here. Um, so now we have our little representation of the PVC sixes buttons and screens, and we have our list of presets here. And so let's quick set up a few presets and we'll just call this one, um, you know, we'll just call this one clean. And so on this preset, we'll say we're not going to have anything on the timeline, so we can turn off the checkbox, which means it doesn't send any program changes to the pedal. Um, on the H9, let's say um, program number seven is a is a room reverb that we want to have for this preset, and so um, this is going to send program change seven to the H9 when this preset is selected. Then a random reverb, um, I guess we're we're not going to use that either, so we'll turn that off. Now on a on a PVC six, these pedals are probably plugged into an audio loop on the on the uh, the PVC um, so that the PVC can manage which pedals are active and which ones are not. Um, there's a separate little sub tab here, audio, and um, each of the PVC loops are listed here. Um, they are like the in a uh, in a sort of a factory preset. Um, they're always set to off, and they're they're set to the uh, sort of the, the global default. Um, we should go here to look at the audio, the global audio tab here. This is where all the audio settings are. And this is where you would set up um, defaults that apply for every preset unless we override them. And you can see every loop is off by default and um, the buffer is on, input one is on and output one is on. And so generally that's that's pretty good. And we'd, we'd you know, for most, uh, most applications we'd leave it like that. But now for this uh, for this preset we're looking at the audio settings for just preset 1 and let's say that um, the H9 is in, in loop 2 um, so we want now this loop 2 to be on so first we click this arrow which means that we're enabling this preset to override the loop and have something different than the default and then we click it to turn it on. And so now all the other loops remain off and everything else all remains in the default. But for preset one, loop two is going to turn on. So that's that's the nice, uh, the power of presets is that when we select preset one on the PVC, it's going to do all these things. It's going to send program change seven to the H9 and it's going to turn on loop nine, I'm sorry, loop two for the H9. So we can set up more presets this way. And um, I don't know, we'll just call this... Uh, solo delay and um, we'll say we want pre uh, timeline preset number four. Um, the Strymon pedals, the uh, timeline uh, Mobius and Big Sky have kind of an odd numbering system where they have like 0A, uh, 0B, 1A, 1B and so you have to translate those to um, numbers like the first preset on the timeline is 0 and, and the next one is one. And so there's a chart in the, uh, in the manuals for all those devices that, that tell you um, which preset, which PC numbers uh, map to the preset numbers on the pedal. But basically, if you just count up and start at zero, you know that's the first preset on the timeline, whatever it's called, and one is the, is the second preset, two is the third preset, et cetera. And we'll just say we want preset four on the timeline. Um, this time we'll turn off the H9, um, and notice this, this doesn't actually bypass the pedal. It's the, uh, the the loop settings here that actually, you know, disable the pedal and, and take it out of the audio path. But this just means don't bother send any sending any MIDI commands to the H9 for this preset. And let's say we use our random reverb pedal, and we'll load up preset 13 on that one. Okay, and then. We'll say that the, the timeline was plugged into loop one, so we want that turned on. 
we'll leave loop 2 off and we'll turn on loop 3. And so as we uh, you know switch between our presets, we see that it'll, you know, send to the H9, turn it on. Um, the solo delay preset, it'll send program changes to these two pedals and turn on their loops. And we can set up um, one more preset here and um, we can just call it, uh, we'll call it Trem. And let's just say we have um, H9 on some tremolo preset and the random reverb on uh, preset nine. Um, and then we would just, again, turn on the loops and there you go. So um, at this point, if you wanted to test it with your system, um, you go up to the menu here and you would write settings to device. The, any changes you make here are not, um, are not automatically copied to the device. So any transfers back and forth have to be done through the transfer menu. You can read settings from device um, if you made any changes on the, the device itself using the process we showed in the, the previous videos. But um, if you only made changes in the editor, you would just write settings to device. It would just copy everything here to your PVC, and then you could try them out. And I should take a moment here to com uh, compare write settings to device and the similar sounding write changes to device. And what the difference is, is that write settings to device copies all the settings from the editor to the PVC. Um, you know, every one of them, like the entire thing. Write changes only does, only copies things that you have changed since the last time you wrote settings or wrote changes. And so um, you, you can use write, write changes um, pretty much most of the time. And it, it's pretty smart and it'll figure out um, you know, what needs to be, what needs to be changed and what doesn't. And so it goes a little faster, sometimes a lot faster than, than doing right settings. But if you ever see some weird discrepancy between what the editor says and what the, uh, the mastermind is actually doing, it wouldn't hurt to do right settings to device to make sure that all the settings are copied, just to make sure there's a, a, a clean copy there. So once you've done your, your settings, you can test it out and you're good to go. And that's all for this week. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comments below. Thanks very much.